Hello YouTube and welcome to another review and this time we have Airfix's Waterloo Prussian Infantry from 1979. This scale is allegedly 172 but it sits somewhere between 187 and 176 so it's quite small probably approximately 182 scale. 22 millimeters is what I actually make it so um, just factor that in if you purchase these however that aside these are incredibly good figures and they do look absolutely wonderful so quite impressed with these from Airfix but it was towards the end of the golden days uh, 1979 and then when Airfix hit the start of the 80s the pose number was reducing drastically and uh, the amount of sets they were putting out was, was a, a very limiting indeed. In fact, there were the more modern sets like Russian soldier infantry and NATO ground crew, uh, items like that, which they were releasing at the time. And that was the death throes of Airfix, really. But this was just before then and the tail end of the golden years. So, what can we say about these figures? These are based on the Landwehr, which basically was a militia and that was first thought about in about 1796 and it actually officially formed in 1813 and these are probably not the most fanciful soldiers you'll ever see in the field they were rather drab long dark jackets mainly dark blue as well as being dark black trousers would probably be white in the summer however they'd be blue or darker colors or even brown in the winter they were really just a hodgepodge the equipment shortage that they had to endure was was pretty rife right up until probably nearer the end of the napoleonics and in fact a lot of these soldiers used to actually steal equipment off um dead french soldiers or whatever just to um you know make themselves a bit more comfortable this soldier here you can see has probably I would say more or less captured French equipment it's too neat for the Landwehr what the Landwehr originally would have had would have been a canvas backpack you know really soft pliable probably white in color but yeah nothing very fancy um, not like this chap who who really he's got quite a neat selection of equipment on his back the cap that they wear is actually quite interesting it's a cloth cap it's called a schmutz a schmutz now i've probably pronounced that wrong but that's what um we're going to run with there somebody can correct me on that and that's a big cloth cap quite comfortable I think on the head and it would have an iron cross on the front and the colour banding around the bottom of the cap would indicate basically what part of the region of Prussia they're from and that would also factor in flashings on the jackets as well although not all the time like I say this was a bit of a hodgepodge collection of soldiers so not all the time are things going to be you know near enough perfect as you probably see on a lot of kits regarding the Landwehr they all look very neat and tidy that more or less wouldn't have been the case this set does have an element of flash on it not much but there is a little bit of flash there the figures are quite petite and they do look good the base is quite thick so if you're worried about the size that might just nudge it up a couple to me I think it's about two millimeters thick the base which is, is quite a bit. This particular guy is actually reloading. So he's going for his musket balls in his pouch or his cartridges. And that would be the M1809 cartridge box that he's going into there. His musket looks quite short. Now I've, I've knuckled them down to the Posdan musket. There was numerous Posdan muskets around from various periods in time, probably from round about 1740 onwards so this could be any variety obviously these guys the Landwehr are not going to get the best of equipment so you're probably looking at a, an older musket there I have not found any detail of them taking obviously dead Frenchmen's muskets and things like that in the field I probably imagine that would happen as long as the French guy that they were taking the musket from had probably enough cartridges and musket balls they, they probably wouldn't think twice about it but he is a very neat and tidy figure probably too tidy for the land there but it's it's a lovely figure and like i say he's just going for his cartridges and reloading so it's not a bad figure okay 
Okay, we'll get the next one. So next figure, we have a guy charging here, although I cannot see a bayonet, so it looks a little bit strange. Um, now, whether or not the bayonet has come off this chap, I don't know. No, definitely not. That is a guy charging with no bayonet attached. I'm not saying that may not have happened, but that's what it certainly looks like to me. Good detail on this chap again. Buttons are showing up on the jacket. It is a really good stab at a figure. And again, the equipment is nice and neat. Bags of equipment on these, which is really good of Airfix. And that's what we really expect these days of good quality kits. So quite impressed with this chap as well. Just like I say, it's a bit odd. He is charging without a bayonet. Now there was about 60 battalions of these guys in the end. They did fight very, very well. The militia was made up of teenagers to men in their 40s, taken from all sorts of professions, farmers, office workers, you name it, just to make up the ranks. They weren't very well trained, but they had a good reputation for fighting during the Napoleonic, so um, they did very, very well. So here we are with our next figure and this guy is kneeling to repel. Again no bayonet on the top of the musket but again packed with equipment and he does look a very very good figure. Now the Landwehr had a cavalry regiment, they had musicians, they had flag bearers, pioneers and jaegers, a very very you know complete outfit really so um, the Germans or well, Prussians really relied on these guys very much so. They really did make up the numbers. And here's our next chap and he's standing firing. Again, no bayonet, but why would he need one when he's standing and firing his musket like that? Another good piece, standard air fixed pose. And yet, musket is really snuggled into his arm and he's really looking down there like he really is concentrating on what he's shooting that probably was pretty much less the case with these chaps but it's still good accurate representation tiny little bit of flash on this one but nothing major Now this is our chap steadily advancing, very very cautiously, and again he's got his bayonet there on the back, knapsack, cartridge pouch, canteen, he's very very well equipped for the Landwehr, and like I say whether or not this equipment is captured, but certainly for the time I really think they were a little bit strapped for um, having such good quality and, and, and vast amount of equipment as these guys are carrying. Um, it wouldn't necessarily look like this in, in reality, but they are good figures and uh, if they did do them totally accurate we'd be complaining there. So I mean I'm quite happy with these, I think they look really really good. Their head and shoulders obviously above the current crop of figures in the Waterloo battle set, uh, which is from which this set is from. But again, another nice figure. Now, here we have our guy who's marching, a popular figure, and he looks excellent as well. Very, very good stance, and I do quite like this figure. Again, lots of equipment on the back. Now he is marching, we have another figure that's similar who is standing still on sentry point. So we'll take a look at him next, but yeah that's a really nice figure. Um, this is the sentry point guy now, standing very tall and proud, it's another nice figure. But in all honesty, I probably could have done with more marching, which is a shame. So, um, I'm not too concerned, but yeah, a few more marching would have been great.
So here we have another chap advancing. I wouldn't exactly say he was marching. Um, his weapon is slightly moved over in a more casual but ready to go mode. But yeah, definitely advancing or quick marching possibly. But another good figure. So here we are with our next figure and this guy is slightly running with his rifle lurched forward. It's kind of more of a trot. Uh, I don't think he's really putting much into that. But it's an unusual pose in a way. As I don't know why he would technically be... I think it might be a quick march or something to be honest. It might be a slight quick sort of march, I don't know. But definitely, I don't think he's at the front line. I just don't think you'd be running like that at all. So in terms of a, what sort of pause that is, it's an unusual one. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with it, but certainly it's an unusual one. I wouldn't want too many of those in the set. Um, I could see me using a few of those, but not too many. Other than that, again, fantastic figure. The detail is top draw. I did have little issues with these figures just in terms of trying to um, check that the poses, I'd, I'd got all the poses for the review. They are quite similar and the plastic being fairly dark, you know, sometimes doesn't help. They all sort of merge into one. So you've got to be careful, separate these up and just make sure you're reviewing the right ones. And like I say, I did miss I did miss a couple of figures out of this uh, review as I was going, and this is one of them. So I have made up for my error, and this is a look at this chap now. But a very good figure. So I think with the great coat he's wearing we can assume that it's relatively cold but to be honest I haven't got much information on the Landveer without this jacket uh, <laughs> so in terms of pictures of what they actually look like without the jacket uh, you know they don't really zip up on you it's mainly every time you see a picture of the Landveer they'll always have this big heavy jacket But yes, a nice figure. Probably haven't got him as centralised as I'd like on the turntable. So please forgive me. And we'll just let him come round for a frontal. Lovely. Now here's our guy with the pike. Now these guys are normally NCOs, so I'll go along with the fact that he must be an NCO. Another nice figure, he seems to be directing what's going on. And it looks like there's a slight bit of a tassel just on the end of the of the pike. But again, another good figure. Quite happy with that one. Now the jacket itself could be either thigh high or knee high. Uh, just depends really. Like I say, no set standard with these things. But the jacket on these ones is above the knee I would say on, on, on most of these just above the knee
here we have our flag bearer and this particular piece is absolutely amazing um, detail on the flag is just outstanding which you'll see on the way back but a very very good quality figure and I'm glad this set does have flag bearers in it wouldn't be right without them and the Landwehr do have a number of different flags there's a lot of information available online mainly of the regions they're actually from and a lot of the flags you know they're quite simple and standard there'll be a big iron cross on them other flags might be a little bit more personal to that particular unit but it's a, it's a great figure this one and it has been a real joy this set you know the other sets just oh, they've all had their, their little moments and I mean the only factor of this one is it is a little bit small but with that chunky base which airfix always do it just pulls them out of the swamp really it does I might do an extra couple of spins on this one just so that everybody's happy I know you could pause the video but uh, let's do one more spin look at the tassels on the flag it's very very good Now I might insert some captions of different types of flags uh, which will appear in the corner. Uh, let's see how this video runs. Just to give people an idea of what the flags should look like. And a flag with these sets, the German sets, uh, sorry the Prussian sets, uh, would be, you know, it's worth doing because these Prussians aren't the most glamorous of figures you know the uniforms are, are fairly bland so to have the flags just breaking up the set is, is really really good and of course there is two in the box so um, you know you could possibly modify the flags um, for different ones just to break up the monotony of the figures Although the flags are partially engraved, you won't notice if you paint them up. The engraving is just really a little bit of help for the painter. And if you don't want to paint them, you can always see something on the flag, so it's quite good. Great figure. So next up is our officer and he's just gently surveying the battlefield and he wouldn't be getting involved in very much at all and it pretty much looks that way. Uniform looks very accurate with the pouch on the mid section of the back there. And his sword just draped down his side. Looks very good. But you won't find anything flashy about these troops. That's not what they're about. Although these, by far and away, they're probably better than the rest of the airfix kits in the box, the battle set. Now I might have already done this one, I'm not sure. But again he's very good a little bit of flash here and there but nothing major not enough to worry me certainly nowhere near as bad as the flash on the British artillery which I think was the last review I did all those months ago but again another good figure just very well detailed Now here's another good figure. He's just checking his flint, I think. And very subtle difference in these figures. They're, they're, they are quite good in that sense, you know, that you have to check through the sprue to make sure you're covering every one of these. 
certainly from the back it can look like one of the others but there's just very subtle differences He's sticking up a bit there. I haven't cleared the base of the sprue very well, but just bear with me. Yeah, he's almost pulling back his flint there. So it's quite a nice one, that one. I quite like it. Now I do believe I've covered them all there, so what we're going to do, we're going to put them all together on our base and we'll have a good look at these. So thank you for watching thus far. This kit probably surfaces around about the £5 mark, I'm pretty sure they've reissued this as part of their sort of Airfix's historic series. Uh, they've re-released some older kits, so I'm not sure if it's one of those, but it probably is. So if it is, it'll register around about four to five pounds, which is a pretty good price. I have seen a few on eBay recently, so don't despair if you want this kit. I'm sure there's other ones around, and um, I don't know how you could make this kit better. Probably. Yeah, I mean, it's quite a good kit, this one. I'm quite surprised. It's quite nice. So thanks for watching, and we'll see you soon. I'll just play the turntable and see how they all look.